I am the original Froggy. In 1934 is when Charter Road finally got finished building. First week in June, they started to move in. I lived at number nine, and I was the first one to be born on the estate. So that made me the original Froggy. I, I, even I can remember going down Poodle Green, there used to be a little ditch there, and it used to be full of frog spawn. When I was old enough to understand, my mother said, you know, we, we live on Froggy Island. And um, I always thought she, it was just a name. And until one day, I wasn't very old, I must have been about three, something like that. And we had a downpour of rain, and it would have been sort of um, early summertime and all of a sudden, all on the ground, just by our gate, there was all these frogs, absolutely hundreds of them, and jumping around. And I used to say to my mum, look, oh, look, come and look at all these frogs. And she said, well, it rains frogs here. It, oh, that's where they come from. It comes from the rain. And of course, I believed it. You could not walk outside without treading on them. There was thousands and thousands of them. But we've always had lots of frogs all around the area and that is where I think the name of Froggy Island come from. My first memories of Egham Hive School were, well, they didn't have a playing field and it was actually a cornfield when I first moved to Wendover Road. But the school bought the playing field, bought the cornfield and turned it into a playing field. But our first six weeks of going to the school, they ploughed the field and pupils, instead of having a sports lesson, used to walk around with buckets picking stones up for six weeks so that there wasn't any stones left on the field. Then they sowed the field with grass and we ended up with the, play, with the playing field. I started at um, Egham High um, Boys School in uh, the S September of uh, 1949 and uh, I started in Form 2. Forms 1 to 5 were in the main uh, building. Form 6 was in a, an old corrugated iron building at the bottom of the playground and Form 7 occupied one half of a, a brick or stone building uh, which was in the girls playground. Uh, I also remember in the playground there was a big advert for um, Stephen's Inc about four foot high uh, because I suppose schools used to use a lot of ink in those days. We had ink wells and um, you know, dip your pen in them on the desks. So I suppose because the schools bought a lot of ink, Stevens ink it was, they used to give them a free thermometer. It was a thermometer with the advert. That was on the wall there. Yeah, the classes were generally quite big, mostly um, sort of 40 plus. Yeah, might even been as big as 50. When they called the register, it was in alphabetical order and uh, obviously with the surname of Pope, I was fairly well down the list. The Gospel Hall have been there I think since late 1800s and a lot of my friends did attend the Gospel Hall. I do know that during the war, although I'm a post-war baby, uh, a lot of evacuees came down from London and did go to Egham Hyde School and they didn't have enough space for them there so some of the classes were actually held in the Gospel Hall. Uh, which isn't too far to walk. And in fact, when I was at school, we used to walk down to the Methodist Church, which was in Wendover Road, for needlework lessons with Mrs. Nichols. I have no idea why, whether there wasn't any room for that class in the school, I don't know, but we would all crocodile our way down after lunch for needlework in the Methodist Hall. There was a, a teacher 
uh, who joined the uh, school, um, his name was Shergold. He was a sort of smallish person and um, he always kept an old plimsoll in, in his inside pocket. And the first thing he does, he's got a, an older boy in the class, he whacks him six times with a plimsoll, really hard. This is our first hour at the school. <laughs> Christ almighty! <laughs> he was renowned for using the slipper. It was a size 12 uh, plimsoll. It was a big. His old hair used to fall over his head. Time he'd finished whacking. Really got laid in there. The amazing thing is, when he left the school, he went to become a missionary. <laughs> I was asked if I would administer that to one lad who had been very naughty, naughty annoying me one day. I can't remember what it was for, but I declined. I didn't think that was my place. I have to say it was mainly the boys that did um, experience this. I think us girls in those days were a little bit more well behaved than the lads. But I don't remember anybody ever being scared, really. No, I, I think... It, it was a very homely, welcoming school, in what well, my particular classes were, and I don't remember anybody being unhappy even. Around about the, the mid-1950s, uh, the um, scout troop first take them high St Paul's, uh, acquired a large prefabricated um, building and they also got permission to um, erect it at the rear of um, Poudre Green Recreation Ground. Parents of the scouts helped build it. My name's Pope, and one of the other scouts was Dean, and another one was Bishop. So it was quite interesting, the Pope, the Bishop and the Dean were busy building it, isn't it? So with um, the help from a lot of the scout parents and the scouts themselves, um, it was dismantled, uh, brought to Pooley Green and re-erected. But before it was uh, re-erected, uh, we had to e excavate for the foundations. And whilst we were, were doing that, it became pretty evident that um, the pond, the old frog's pond, uh, had been filled in with domestic refuse in the um, sort of late 1920s and early 30s by the number of uh, old um, bottles and uh, other debris that uh, had been used to fill it in. Before the, uh, com the uh, current community hall was here, we had the old community hall, which again was a similar sort of design, but a brick building. Um, it had a large hall and a small hall, and the small hall housed the library, which I think was a satellite of Staines Library. Whether it was there every day of the week, I can't imagine they would be able to move it around much, but it, it filled the small hall, and on my way home from school, I would always call in at least once a week to pick up some books, and the, the smell of leather books as you went in just stays with you. Um, you know, I can smell it now, <laughs> it's just amazing. And then on the corner of Pooley Green, it was where the shops are, it was just a field with horses in it. It was very rural here when I was a kid. The fields up at, uh, near Pooley Green, we used to go what they call gleaning, which is you take a rake with you and the farmers, he's cut the crop and there's all the stubble left there. But you go along with a rake and that, you can pick up a lot of grain and stuff. They call it gleaning. And we used to do that, that helped feed the rabbits and that. We used to keep head, um, guinea pigs and rabbits, and every now and again we'd want some straw for them. So I lived down Wendover Road, so we used to get a big sack, walk up to the farm at Hive, where the Magna Carta School is now, Fuse Farm, knock on the door, and the farmer's wife used to come in and say, can we buy a sack of straw, please, and give us sixpence? And then we used to go round the back into this barn that was risen off the floor and we'd get in there and we'd fill the bag up with straw and we'd jump and jump on it and get it compressed and it used to take us about half an hour to get this straw. We'd get so much straw in the bag you wouldn't believe it. Our arms ached the time we got home because we got so much straw in it but it was sixpence a bag no matter what you put in it you see. I think community life has always been to 
two ways. It's either church and people are churchgoers and they make their social life through the church or they used to go to the pub. The Hyde was a very busy area because at one time it even had four pubs. People, people came there for, to go fishing or they went to the Swan or they came to us. We had, as we left, five dart teams. We had a golf society. We had quiz nights. It was a good social life. Most pubs in 1960s were two bars. There was a public bar, which was the darts and crib and things like that. And there was a saloon bar that you took your wife or your girlfriend, you did your courting in. And it had a horseshoe bar in the middle of it. So one side was public, one side was saloon. We then realised that it seemed very unfair that the poor saloon people were paying like two pence more for their pint than the other ones when they could see one another. They could like wave to one another or even talk to one another because it was so near. So we made it into one bar, more or less. We took the little wall down. Um, it was still more or less into two sections and the people still, in a way, stayed in their section. Everybody smoked. I mean, the ashtrays were full all the time. Everybody smoked. And out of our door that led out to where the opposite side of the swan, the smoke would billow out. I mean, it would absolutely billow out. People would come in and say, we thought you was on fire. Now, it was something that, you know, being inside, you didn't even think of. So you, you, know, you went out and looked, and yes, it was like coming out as if the place was on fire. Where we are now, we're in the Hive Centre. There used to be another building built before this. And they used to have, on, on Monday night, which was a bit rare, I suppose. They used to have dances with a live, live group, live group, and there used to be jiving, do's and it was twisting as well. And a couple of friends of ours used to jive ever so good. Because everybody liked dancing and like they do nowadays, but it was different dancing then, um, with the rock and roll and but crowded out like they are in these clubs they have nowadays, you can't move and it was just the same then. Oh, the dances were packed, really packed with the nippers. I'll tell you how busy it was. You used to queue up at the door, there was too many in there because it was only licensed so many, isn't it? Sort of like regulations. And we had a queue up at the door to get in. That's how busy it was. I, I mean, I'm a great patriot. I love anything like that. And I used to watch television and see them preparations for street parties. And I thought they're never going to shut um, Thorpe Road. You know, no hope we'd ever go on one. Um, but then one night I was putting the boys to bed and the door went, my husband opened it, and it was Tess. And um, they were having a street party and they were inviting all the people on between there and the railway. So I ended up going to all the meetings and things and making the bunting and just general, it was great fun. That was a, when I got to know all the Goring Road people. Children got a, I think they got a mug and a coin. I, I bought my family little presents, uh, commemoratives, and my neighbour for babysitting. Yeah, we made hats because we all had a, a hat competition. We had fancy dress, so we were all busy doing that. It was a great, great time. I know when I moved into Glebe Road, which was in 1964, so I then was truly one of this area. Um, the, the shops were there then. Uh, one particular shop that I used to use a lot was Pamela's, the dress shop. I, I could go all over the place to Windsor, to Staines, even to town and not find anything I liked. And then come back to Pooley Green and, and pop into Pamela's and find something really nice there. So uh, it, it was a good shop. The one that I worked was down Pooley Green and um, Mr Hall. And um, yes, I worked there. I used to go in um, when I left, when I finished my schooling. Well, not for the day, that is, when I used to come out from school. Sometimes I used to run down there and they asked me if I would like a little job about filling the shelves up and that, which I shouldn't have done because I wasn't old enough. So I. Well, he's not alive now, so he can't get into trouble. And for an hour, I used to go into the shop and um, started dusting and then um, filling the shelves up. And um, then I, it got that, as I got a little bit older, I stayed a bit longer. Things were on ration. 
so everybody had to have a rationing book and so they had to be registered at one particular shop you couldn't go to any shop it had to be registered at one particular shop so all the people around Charter Road Rowan Avenue, uh, pretty green. A lot of them registered with Mr. Hall. So I used to, in the evening, when people used to come in and give their order over and leave their book, um, I, used to, I used to start getting their orders ready and um, put them, Mr. Hall would be out having his dinner with his wife and I'd be in the shop. I shouldn't have been because I wasn't old enough. Uh, he can't get into trouble now. I did attend the youth club over at um, St Paul's Church, particularly when they had dances which were on a Friday night. I can't actually remember the youth club, so whether I just took the, you know, the, the dances and uh, as the good bits and, and didn't attend the rest, I don't know. But I do remember there were live bands at most of it, um, and, you know, obviously dancing and drinking, but not alcohol in my uh, memory. I don't remember having alcohol there. Um, lots of other soft drinks. And at the end of the evening, something peculiar, I thought, but I can understand why now, um, Father Duke, who was then the minister there, used to come in at the end of the evening to give us a talk. Um, at the end of a, a night of dancing and having a good time, but I think most of us sloped off before the poor gentleman got into his flow, so. I'd seen her before, a few weeks before, at a party near where I lived in Stanwell, and I saw her chatting away in the kitchen, and I thought, I really fancy her. She was always dressed tidy, good looking, and her hair was always immaculate, because she was an hairdresser, and she was that fussy anyway. And, and, when we had, I had to take someone to the party, I went round and knocked on her door. And that's where it started, like we was going out for a fair while. And um, we got married in, in 60, 60, 66 at the local church here at St Paul's. And walking down the aisle, I was so nervous, I had my eyes closed all the way down the aisle. <laughs> and that's about all I remember really, don't remember much about it.